Welcome back everyone, it is Eric from Candy, and today we're back checking out some Japanese tournament results for the month of April, courtesy of our friends here over at PokemonCard.io. So if you're not familiar with these guys, they do a great job at compiling these Japanese results every month. But today, I really wanna focus in on the decks that we're winning towards the end of the month, just because these are gonna be the lists that have the new Snow Hazard and Klaver's cards, which are gonna be coming out in our Paldea Evolve set in the not too distant future. But if you guys do wanna see all of the results and not just the ones we're checking out today, I will have links in the description to all of the results throughout the entire month. But that being said, guys, if you do enjoy these Japanese tournament result videos, be sure to smack that like button to feed that YouTube algorithm. And let's jump in and check out what's winning for the month of April. So to start with, we're gonna check out the new Wings of Union deck or Wings of Unity. I'm not sure the exact attack name, but essentially this deck is like the new Night March or the new Mad Party, where we have this Flamigo, a Watchroll, and a Murkrow that all have the Wings of Union attack that do 20 times the amount of Pokemon in the discard pile with this attack. And they also have three copies of the Pokemon Go Ditto, which definitely makes sense because you wanna have all these Pokemon in the discard to do more damage. And then from there, Ditto can just copy the attacks of these Pokemon instead. But it's kind of cool because you got the Murkrow, which can hit things like Mew and Guardi for weakness. We got Watchroll that can hit uh, Lugia for weakness. And it looks like they are pairing this with Curlia just for a little bit of extra draw power and you know, it makes sense. Curly can discard your Wings of Union Pokemon throughout the game. And speaking of which, they also have the new Squawkabilly EX, which definitely seems like a natural partner. You can just dump your hand and draw six on the first turn of the game with this thing. I feel like the thing I would like to see from this list would be some sort of damage modifiers though, because that is sort of, I think, the big issue with this archetype currently, other than just the fact that it gets obliterated by Lost Zone decks. But you really just don't have enough of these Wings of Union Pokemon to do the damage that we need to. So I think you might have to play something like a Defiant Ban or Choice Belt or something like that to sort of help out with things, um, you know, in the meantime, while we wait for more of these styles of Pokemon. Nevertheless, I mean, this deck did end up winning a tournament. I know these are smaller Japanese tournaments, but it's still encouraging to see a cool deck like this, uh, you know, like a single prize non loss Zone deck still be able to win a tournament. So it looks like my boy Noivern actually won a tournament, one of my favorite Pokemon. So I'm hoping Noivern EX actually is good and this tournament win isn't a fluke, but this card is pretty interesting. For two colorless energy to 70, it prevents all damage from your opponent's basic Pokemon done to it on the next turn. So it's kind of like the Ice Q card that we've seen pop up, you know, over this past year a little bit. And then its other attack, you can't quite see it here, but it's a Psychic and Dark Energy and does 120 and your opponent can't play special energy or stadium cards. So overall, a pretty annoying Pokemon to deal with depending on uh, what deck you're going against. So it looks like in the early games, while you're building up your Noiverns, uh, they're trying to lead the game with Klefki to shut off the abilities on basic Pokemon, but they also do have the Mimikyu here, which I guess is another potentially like early game Pokemon you can lead the game with. Uh, that walls against things like Pokemon V as well as Pokemon EX. So it's kind of like a new version of Miltank, but the annoying stuff doesn't stop there. We have the Spirit Tomb to shut off abilities on Pokemon V. And on top of all of this, we have four Path to the Peak. So this deck is intent on not giving Pokemon V any chance to use those abilities. So decks like Mew V Max seem like they actually could struggle against something like this, just because between Klefki Spirit Tomb and the Path of the Peaks, it's gonna be very difficult to actually get their decks off the ground and going. The big issue this deck does have to overcome is that it does have a double manual attachment attack. Uh, they do have the Raihan here to help with that a little bit. So if they do need a Noivern quick and powered up in a single turn, they can do that. But you know, that is still one of my bigger issues I think I have with this deck overall. But you know what guys, if the double attachment thing and the sort of lower damage output of this card doesn't wind up being a, you know, a huge issue, this deck could maybe see some more success. So I'm hoping that this early tournament dub for Noivern is a sign of things to come from it. We also have an updated Meowskarata EX deck. So while this card isn't particularly new, I think Japan's had it for like a month now, a little over a month, something like that. But the big new inclusion, it looks like they've opted to choose to play, is going to be the Crobat Evolution line. So Crobat, or I should say the Golbat, first off, it has an ability whenever you evolve into it, you can draw two cards. And then the Crobat, whenever you evolve into that one, 
you draw three, but the notable part of the evolution line is actually gonna be the Crobat here. I believe this is from Silver Tempest. And so the reason they're playing this is for the second attack for three colorless energy. You choose one of your opponent's Pokemon, does 30 damage, but if they're knocked out from the attack, you take two extra prizes. Now, normally this attack would be sort of clunky to pull off just in general, not only because you need to whittle them down to basically 30 damage remaining, which isn't that hard with Meowth between the abilities on Meowth that place three damage counters and the Radiant Alakazams, I don't think that part's gonna be too tricky, but the, the part that up until now that's been more annoying is the three colorless energy attack cost, but that is where the new reversal energy over here is gonna come into play. So reversal energy by default only provides a colorless energy, but if it's attached to a non rule box evolution Pokemon and you're behind on prizes, it provides essentially three rainbow energies, which allows your Crobat to be able to attack just with a single attachment. So if you're going against, let's say Lost Box, you can use two um, Meowskarada abilities, put them up to six damage counters, and then use this attack on Crobat to take three prize cards and basically just do that twice to win the game, which seems pretty cool. Now, the big issue I think this deck has though is it's pretty tight on space. And as you can see, uh, it looks like they're not playing too many supporters. They have the three Ionos, but then they also only have two Jacques. I guess since you have the Crobat, that does sort of, uh, the Crobats and Golbats, that does sort of offset things a little bit. So I guess that does supplement your draw power. I feel like this deck could maybe even find space for a Manaphy. And then at that point, they could change Arvin to Irida because they don't play tools in this deck. And at that point, Irida is just a better version of Arvin, if we're being honest. So I'm kind of hoping that uh, Snow Hazard and Clay Burst gives this archetype the boost that it needs to to be a little bit more competitive because I think Meowth is a really cool card, very much so like the old Decidueye GX. So hoping that this set will finally make this card a little bit more usable. So up until this point, all of the lists that we've looked at have been winning smaller local shop tournaments, but all of the lists for the rest of the video that we're gonna look at are gonna be ones that have actually won the city league tournaments, which are kind of like the equivalent of our league cup. So these are gonna be like 30, 40, 50, 60 people sometimes, and the stakes are a little bit higher. So here we have another updated deck with some new cards. That of course is gonna be Lugia V Star. And this is not gonna be the single strike version. This is gonna be like the colorless energy based version that has started to become a little bit more popular over the past month or so over there. But actually one of the biggest new additions to this spin on Lugia is actually a non-colorless Pokemon. That's gonna be Luxray. What makes this card cool is that it has an ability where if you're behind on prizes, you can just immediately bench it. So at that point, you can bench Luxray, use your Archeops to accelerate your reversal energy to power it up, and now you can hit for 180. So I could definitely see this being good in like mirror matches where, especially if you're the player going second and your opponent is getting the first KO of the game, typically in Lugia mirror matches, the player who takes the first KO or the first multi-prize KO is usually the one winning. But with Luxray, you can sort of give them the old Uno reverse and force them to deal with a single prize or after you return KO their Lugia here. But also the other new big addition the deck is getting is gonna be surprisingly therapy energy. I'm pretty sure that's what this one is called, but it prevents special conditions done to the Pokemon it's attached to, which is good, of course, because these colorless Lugia decks, they do play Snorlax, which is a pretty good heavy hitting Pokemon, but it does put itself asleep whenever it attacks. So if we do have this new therapy energy, Snorlax actually can attack successively on back-to-back -back turns if it does not get KO'd. And the other big new Pokemon inclusion, of course, is gonna be Squawkabilly. And I think this is a card that really does fit nicely in Lugia, especially now in these new post-rotation Lugia decks where it is slightly more difficult to get Archeops in discard pile. And now with Squawkabilly, being able to just dump your hand and draw six, it can make your early game a little bit stronger with Lugia, which is really where Lugia suffers. Once you get your Archeops into play, you're feeling good. It's just those first two turns are the sketchiest and Squawkability does definitely give your deck a little bit of a boost going forward. But I'm curious what you guys are thinking. Do you like this version of Lugia going forward or do you think you're gonna stick with the single strike version that has been popular up until now? Definitely not, let me know your thoughts down below. Up next from there, we have another deck that is based around cheating additional prize cards and that's gonna be like an Arceus, Greedent VMAX deck. So 
Yeah, Greedent's been around for a little bit, hasn't done a whole lot up until this point, but if you need a refresher on it, it does have this attack for two color synergy, does 30 damage, but if you take a KO with it, you take an additional two prize cards. So I think the idea here is we're gonna use the Radiant Blastoise, another card that doesn't see a lot of play, but this card does pair nicely with the Greedent because you can use this ability on Blastoise to start pinging damage counters throughout the course of the game, kind of like Inteleon VMAX, very similar style of ability here. And then once you get them down to that 30 damage threshold, you boss them up or even play the Toy Catcher that we have here and uh, make that happen. So Toy Catcher is another card that has seen little or debatably even zero play. I'm not even sure if this has popped up in like a, a day two of any major event. I could be wrong, but definitely not a popular card. But if your opponent has 30 HP or less, you just bring it into the active spot. And we do also have a couple of other damage buffing cards here. We have the Cleansing Gloves. This one definitely makes a lot of sense to me just because there are a couple of low HP psychic Pokemon running around already, like Ralts, Sableye, Comfy. So with a Blastoise Snipe and a Cleansing Gloves, you're actually going to be in one shot territory of these Pokemon. And I actually really do like the Arvin here because you can play Arvin and grab Cleansing Gloves plus Toy Catcher and get the same play off uh, without needing boss. You know, outside of Iano and Squawkabilly, it seems like we have all of the cards for this deck to exist in standard format. So I'll actually be curious to maybe even play around with this for the moment before we even get Paldea evolved. But, uh, you know, it won a City League, which is you know, pretty impressive. These are decently sized tournaments, so maybe it's finally Greedent's time to shine. We'll have to see, but uh, very unique deck, if nothing else. And the final older archetype we're going to take a look at here is an updated version of Gardevoir. So we've seen a little bit of discourse around Gardevoir going forward uh, due to all of the hype around Champions Festival. And this sort of deck list is kind of why we're seeing a lot of talk about Champions Festival. It's actually because of Drifloon here. There's 30 times the amount of damage counters on this Pokemon. And we already do have this Drifloon. It already exists in standard format. But what makes this card good going forward now is the fact that we have this new Pokemon tool card that can increase the HP of basic Pokemon by 50. So now you have essentially an extra 150 damage that we can do with this card. So between this tool and the Champions Festival to heal it, to allow us to accelerate an additional energy with Gardevoir, Drifloon is a pretty heavy hitting Pokemon and this could be one of the more popular ways to build Gardevoir after Paldea Evolved comes out. Now, there definitely are some big changes between this list and what we have, you know, I think come to know in the current standard format. Like if we just compare this to the uh, list that Tord played at UIC, there's no Luminion or anything like that. But the bigger change is that there's no Zacian V and there's no Sky Seal Stone. So I'm guessing this player is just thinking, you know what? Drifloon only gives up a single prize. It fills the same role as Zacian in a lot of instances. So let's just cut that and play, you know, this new tool instead of the Sky Seal Stone. And the other big difference that I can tell is that there's actually no discarding supporters. There's no Professor's Research and no Serena. It looks like they're just favoring Ayano as the primary draw supporter for the deck. And I do think it does make a little bit of sense because early game with Gardevoir, you know, you're probably going to be the player that goes down on prizes first. But even in the late game, once both players have taken several prizes, you don't even necessarily mind going down to a low hand size because you always have Curlia or even uh, the Shining Arcana Gardevoir to draw you out of that low hand size. So is this going to be the best way to play Gardevoir going forward? It remains to be seen, but already it does appear to be doing well over in Japan. So finally getting into some of these newer archetypes that we're going to be getting, this is going to be Ting Lu EX, and it has this ability where if it's your active Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon with damage counters on them have no abilities, excluding other Pokemon EX. And then its attack, I believe, is three fighting that does 150, and you put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. I believe that is what this is. So you can see the synergy here with the attack and the ability. You do this attack get damage on the field, your opponent can't use their abilities. So that means like no Genesec Vs, no Luminion Vs, no Lugia V stars, etc. But we also have the two copies of Halucha in the list here that definitely makes sense just because this is a much quicker way of, you know, getting those damage counters, you know, peppering the field. That way you can start shutting off all these abilities that you're aiming to with these different Ting Lus. 
but the big downside to this card is definitely the attack cost and it looks like this player here is choosing to try to remedy that with a variety of cards they've got the two Coridon ex so of course this is probably going to be their ideal turn one um you know play to go for you get a couple of energy in the discard pile accelerate it with the Coridon and be set up and ready to go from there but also we have the four copies of gutsy pickaxe again another card that makes total sense here it's going to speed up your deck a little bit and every now and again uh you will hit fighting energy with this item card to be able to accelerate to your benched fighting pokemon uh they've got the gape jaw bog as their stadium of choice there's definitely a few different stadiums i think you could play with this deck and that actually is reflected in a variety of the different lists that are uh doing well over there uh so between the howlucha the gape jaw bog and this attack there's plenty of ways of getting damage counters on your opponent's field. And then we also have the Radiant Owl Kazam here as the Radiant Pokemon of choice to help manipulate those damage counters a little bit to make sure they are always on the right Pokemon that you want. But in terms of other notable cards, we also have this new item, I'm sorry, new Pokemon tool card. Again, I forget the name of this one, but this is plus 50 HP for your basic Pokemon V. So that's gonna make Ting Lu a whopping 290 HP Pokemon. So that's pretty good for just a basic here. Penny also does seem pretty good here too, just because uh, not only can we use this to like heal our Pokemon if they get swung on, but also we can reuse Howlucha, which definitely could be good at keeping those damage uh, counters placed where we want. So I, I will say Ting Lu, it feels a little bit clunky or it seems like it would feel that way just because it's three fighting energy for its attack cost. Like that's a lot for just fighting energy. But between the Squawk ability and the Coridon and these other discarding cards, it seems like it's actually not that hard to get this Ting Lu up and running. But we do have one more Ting Lu list that we're gonna check out today. I think a lot of the cards here kind of overlap a little bit, but it does seem like this list is a little bit more turbo-ish than the previous one. We can see they're not playing the Radiant Alakazam, instead they're playing Radiant Greninja, which I do think also does make sense because it's just another way you can help get energy into the discard pile to accelerate with Coridon. Plus it also does help draw you cards throughout the game. But in addition to the Gutsy Pickaxe, they're also playing four Trekking Shoes. So again, just more outs to, again, discarding fighting energy and having these more explosive turn ones that you're hoping to with the deck. But again, overall guys, I think between this list and the last one, this is kind of a good snapshot of what these Tinglu decks might start to look like. And the last archetype we're gonna look at list for is gonna be, of course, for the brand new Chien Pao EX. I'd say debatably, or maybe even not debatably, maybe definitively the most hyped new archetype that we're gonna be getting out of Paldea Evolved. Bax Caliber is essentially a reprint of Blastoise where we get to accelerate as many water energies from hand as we want. And then the Qian Pao, it's actually the same attack as Raichu V, uh, but for two water energy, you discard any amount of water energy from your Pokemon, and it does 60 for each one you discard in this way. But the ability here actually does help out with this whole strategy. You can just search your deck for two water energies if it's your active Pokemon. Irida also is just such a good card for this deck. This is a card that no doubt Blastoise decks of the past would have loved to have had, since of course you can just grab your Bax Caliber plus Rare Candy and be ready to go. But we do have some other Pokemon here. We got the Kyogre as like a backup attacker, though I guess you can actually attack with pretty much any of the other Pokemon here if you want to, even Luminion. Uh, but the Kyogre I do think is pretty cool because you take all the energy that's attached to it and return it to your hand, and then you snipe 180, I'm pretty sure. You can just get it back to hand, and even if Kyogre gets knocked out, you can immediately on the next turn slap all the energy back down with your Bax Caliber onto your next attacker. I also do like the Babarel inclusion. Uh, we've seen something similar in the past with Blastoise decks. A lot of them played like a 1-1 Electrode line. Electrode was basically the same thing, but you just drew until you had four cards. And this serves a similar purpose by making you a little bit more Iano proof, more judge proof, because at the end of the day, the big downside to Bax Caliber as like an archetype is that you are reliant on attaching energy from hand, which means if your opponent does hit you with a Judge, Roxanne, or Iano in the late game, you might not always have energy, and Babarel does allow yourself a way to, you know, bail yourselves out of those sorts of situations. And this is a stadium card we've seen very little of. Actually, I would say near zero play of uh, up until this point. This is Skaters Park, and this is actually pretty cool with Bax Caliber because whenever your Pokemon retreat, you get the energy back into your hand. 
so this kind of offers you like a free retreating option uh, because you can just retreat, get all of that energy back and slap it back down on your next Pokemon with your Bax Calibers. And to wrap things up, guys, we have one more Chien Pao list we're going to take a look at. And this one is, you know, I think including a lot of the similar things we just saw in that last list with a couple of differences here. I think the big one is going to be the inclusion of a 1-1 Palky of V-Star line. And I actually do think this is probably the route I personally would tend to go with this deck. Uh, just because Palkia, not only does it give you a decent attacker to lean on at some point, has a little bit more HP, different weakness, but also the ability gives you basically a plus 180 damage buff on a certain turn of the game because you get up to three water energies out of your discard and put them into play. And that's, again, 60 for each one you're discarding uh, with this attack on Xian Pao. We got a Lost Vacuum, so I guess... In theory, Irida can now grab you a stadium bump as well, which definitely seems pretty cool. And they also are choosing to play Super Rod instead of Clara, which the last list was playing. And I do think I probably like Super Rod a little bit more just because this does allow you to still play a different supporter like an Ayano or a Boss's Orders. Now, if there's any card that is absent of these lists that we took a look at, it's going to be the new tool card that increases your uh, HP by 50 for basic Pokemon. I will say it did pop up in some other Chan Pal lists that are also on PokemonCard.io, um, but that also does seem like a card that might be vying for, uh, you know, a potential staple slot in these Chan Pal decks. So that is the one thing that could still make its way into these decks uh, going forward as well. But guys, I think that's going to be a good stopping point for today's video. I think we actually looked at a pretty good mix of decks today. I'm definitely curious which ones out of these today that we looked at you are most excited for. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there's a ton of other decks that were winning for the month of April. So if you guys want to see all of the different winning decks, I will have links to those down below in the description over on PokemonCard.io. But if you did enjoy today's content, as always, remember to leave a like on the video. And if you're feeling a little extra generous and want to take that support to the next level, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch at rarecandytcg.com. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.